Hi, welcome to the 3D portion of the After Effects basic training series. In this segment, we're gonna take a look at creating 3D layers in After Effects and cameras and lights and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. What I have is a blank composition and I'm gonna take some of my media here and just stick it into the comp. So I'm just dragging it out. Now, I'm gonna also trim the composition and just drag the work area in, right click and choose trim comp to work area. So now we just have these four layers and they extend to the length of the composition. Now in After Effects, everything is mostly two dimensional. So layers are on top of layers and that's just kind of the way things stack together. But After Effects also has 3D functionality, which means I can turn these layers into 3D and to do that, we have a 3D layer switch. So we just click it for each layer we want to be 3D and the layers are now 3D. But you're saying, okay, I don't see anything different except if you select a layer, you see a little gizmo that allows you to adjust the layers in 3D space. So for example, I'm gonna solo this layer so that we just see this layer. What I can do is drag the red arrow left and right and that moves it on the X axis. Green arrow, Y axis, up and down. And then we have the Z axis which moves it in Z space. So you can move it close or far away. Now, you know, you're probably thinking, well that's the same as just scaling it up. Well, watch this. I'm gonna create a new camera. So now this is a 3D camera that comes inside of After Effects and there's some options here. I'll just leave it at the 50 millimeter preset and choose OK. So now we have a composition camera and this camera now can see all of the 3D layers and with a camera in the comp we can now access this great camera tool. We have the orbit camera tool, track XY camera tool and the Z camera tool. Now the orbit camera tool allows you to click in the composition and drag around, basically flying around the objects. Now we have the track camera tool, which allows you to move past stuff. I know it looks like I'm moving the layer, but I'm just moving the camera. And we also have the Z camera tool that allows you to kind of push in close to the layers or pull back far away. Now, what can we do with our 3D layers? Well, let's arrange them in 3D space. So I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to scale them all down just a little bit and just sort of move them move them around okay now I can also move these layers forward and back so I can go to the Z axis roll over until we see the little Z and push this back take this one we'll move it close you know move this one back you can also hold down shift and it'll move the layer um, you know, faster into the distance. So now we have our layers kind of offset in 3D space. And then if we take the orbit camera tool, we can really start to see that our layers are in fact three dimensional. Now we may want to move them a little bit closer together so that we can really fly around them. But as you can see, we do have the control over these layers using the camera. Now we can go to our track Z camera tool and kind of push in through these layers and make like a video, you know, flyby or something. And if you hit the letter C, that toggles through these tools. This tool allows us to kind of move the camera. This one moves in, you know, this one flies around. Now we also have access to so many more functions now that we're in 3D. For example, right now we have the active camera. Well, we can also change this to some preset views. For example, we go to the top view and see what these layers look like from above. So you can see we can move these around, you know, maybe make them closer together or offset them, you know, a little bit easier from the top view. You can see now our layers are a little bit closer together and we can, you know, animate this. For example, if we go to the camera, bring down the transform properties, we can keyframe the position of the camera go to the beginning here, set the stopwatch for the position, move forward, and then X, Y, Z. Z meaning forward and back, and we can move the Z to a higher value, 
And then if we play this back with the RAM preview, you can see we sort of push through the 3D layers. We can also add easy ease curves to this keyframe. So if we hit F9, if you remember from the animation segment, this will just make the animation a little bit smoother. Now I'm going to set the resolution to a quarter so that it renders a bit faster and I'll just hit preview. So there's a pretty simple 3D animation. Now there's a lot more we can do. For example, I'm going to create a light. So I'm going to choose layer, new, light. And here is our light dialog. We can make a spotlight, which is a light that points in a direction. We can make a point light, which is sort of like a light bulb that just illuminates out from the center. And an ambient light, which you don't actually see, but just slightly brightens everything up depending on how bright you make it. Now, I like to use the point light for, for most things. And there's an option to cast shadows and to change the color of the light. So let's make the light color blue and we'll turn the cast shadows on. And then I'll choose OK. And so now we've created a light and that's what the light looks like. And our light can also be moved around in Z space. You can move it forward and back, bring it up, up high. And we can also change the light properties by choosing layer light settings. You know, and go back in and say, well, blue is a little intense and change it as needed. You can also bring down the light options and you're going to see you can again change the settings. But what about casting shadows? I turn that on but nothing is happening. Well, layers also have to be told to either re receive shadows or to also cast shadows. To access 3D options for any 3D layer, hit AA twice, the letter A twice. And you bring up the material options. You can also just toggle down and you'll see it right below the transform option. So we have our material option. So cast shadows is off. Well, what if we want that on? Now, more importantly, what if we want that on for several layers? Well, we can do it for each layer. Turn it on, go to this layer, turn it on, you know, etc. But if we select a bunch of layers, hit AA, turn cast shadows on, it turns them on for all of the layers. So let's put this light into a position to cast shadow. So I'm going to bring it forward. And now you can see a shadow is sort of casting right here. And I'm going to shut these layers off for a second. And then we're going to move this layer around. And we'll push it back closer to our other layer. And then I'm going to move my camera in a bit. And we're going to orbit around so we can see this. So our light is now casting shadows. So this layer is sending shadows to the background layer. Now we can go into our light options. AA actually brings up material options for any 3D layer. And we can turn the diffusion for the shadow up. And if we're tricky enough, you can see that the shadow now is soft. And uh, you know that's helpful. Um, we can also bring the darkness of the shadow down if we just want it to be a slight shadow. So as you can see, lights and shadows and 3D layers have a lot of different uses. But let's go ahead and delete the light, go to our camera, reset the camera position, and then go to our two layers and reset their transform position. And reset. And so now everything's back to its default level. And I'm going to scale these layers down a bit. And then I'm going to move one to the right and one sort of to the left. Then I'm going to move one closer to the camera and one further away from the camera. And what I'm going to do is go to the camera settings, bring down the camera options, and turn on the depth of field. Now the depth of field is basically the function that allows you to simulate a real camera lens where you have a focal plane, where something is in focus and something further away or closer to you is out of focus. So we turn this on by clicking. And then if we bring the aperture up, make it larger, you'll see that everything is going out of focus. And that's because our focus distance is probably right in the middle of these two layers. So I'm going to take my focus distance and move it. So you can see we can focus on her 
or we can focus on the front layer. Let's see, we can adjust these layers. So if we slide the focus distance, you can see we can kind of move between these two. Now another part of 3D and After Effects are the 3D aware effects. What I'm going to do is create a new solid. And from the effects presets, I'm going to type in particle. And there's an effect in the simulation category called CC Particle World. I'm going to drag this out to my black solid. And as you can see, it creates this crazy looking 3D fountain. Now, this particular effect has a little 3D box next to it when we have a 3D camera out. And that means that this effect can see 3D. Now, we don't have to turn on the 3D layer switch. In fact, we're not supposed to. Um, this effect is aware of the camera and renders it out accordingly. So if we come in here to our orbit camera tool, we can rotate around and see that this effect is actually 3D. Now you'll notice the layers just don't, don't render in the correct order. And that's simply because After Effects is 2.5D. So it's not quite 3D. It basically works in a way where layers that are on top render on top and layers that are underneath render underneath. So if I were to take this mall video and put it on top, it would then render in the correct order. So you sort of just have to kind of trick After Effects to do what you want it to do if it's not going to do it for you, um, you know, at the default level. But anyway, there are many effects that are 3D aware, and I just wanted to kind of touch on this possibility of really adding, you know, a new dimension in 3D. Also, some great plugins. So I got to plug these guys because they're just uh, they're great guys. Um, Trapcode.com. They have a plugin called Particular, which is fully 3D and uh, can make some amazing effects. They're also working on a new plugin that should be out by the time you're watching this, but I don't want to say too much about it. Needless to say, uh, check out their uh, their plugins. They're really great for After Effects.